Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintouts.com. Today we're going to be doing a non-technical discussion of private key control models. These are how wallets store and secure users' private keys to give them access to their digital funds. As always, there's a te text article that accompanies this video on the website. So before we can discuss different security models around private keys and wallets, we first need to talk a little bit about what a private key is. A private key is a randomly generated, and most critically, secret, piece of information uh, used to derive your addresses for your wallet and essentially uh, allow you to prove that you own some amount of digital funds that are stored out on a blockchain. So again, these private keys are used to derive your public keys and addresses for a cryptocurrency that you use to uh, allow someone to send you money by using an algorithm called elliptic curve cryptography. Now it's really important to remember that you can't go backwards from a public address or public key to the private key that it was generated from. So again, Private keys are secret. They're meant to be kept safe and secure, and they prove that you have access and you own a certain amount of a cryptocurrency. So what are some different ways that wallet software uses to store and secure these private keys? The first model is one that I would call a full control model. These are wallets like the Bitcoin.com wallet or the original Bitcoin Core full node wallet. In this model, only the user has access to the private keys stored in the wallet. They don't go to a web server anywhere. No one knows about them except for the user of that wallet software. This is by far the most secure implementation. The private keys never leave the wallet software, never leave the uh, device that the wallet is stored on, and therefore there's no amount of trust uh, involved with using one of these wallets as long as it's securely implemented. Now this is the least user-friendly sort of model. Someone using a traditional full control wallet has to understand the importance of private keys and make sure that they're backed up. If the device that this wallet was stored on was fried or stolen or wiped, uh, you would lose access to your cryptocurrency funds unless you have the backup of the uh, private keys stored somewhere else. So it is important to have some level of technical and crypto savvy uh, to use one of these wallets safely and keep access to your money. Now the second model are these hybrid web wallets. These are wallets like the wallets found at blockchain.info or btc.com. With these wallets, you log on to a website which only has access to encrypted private keys that are stored on their servers. So the website or the developer of the web wallet doesn't know what your private keys are, but they keep an encrypted backup safe for you. Now this is still pretty secure, uh, but requires some trust of the web wallet developer. Uh, you have to sort of trust that the company doesn't have any backdoors on their software that would uh, give them your encryption passphrase, or um, you know, somehow send clear text or unencrypted private keys to their servers. Now, this type of wallet is a little bit more user-friendly. Uh, most of these wallets still do offer full private key backups in the form of a mnemonic or a private key export. However, all you really need to remember to use one of these wallets is a login and password, much like a traditional website. The password generally serves as the decryption passphrase, in some sense, uh, to the private keys of yours that are stored, backed up, and encrypted on the company's server. The final, the final model is the custodial wallet. These wallets are uh, popular on exchanges like Coinbase.com. With this model, the user of the wallet actually has no knowledge of what his or her private keys are. They're entirely stored and known by the company or the developer implementing the wallet. Now, this model, for obvious reasons, is the least secure. It requires a complete trust of the company developing the wallet uh, to make sure that they not only uh, don't run off with your private keys and therefore your money, but also keep the private keys safe from hackers trying to break into their servers. 
Now the price for this, you know, even though this you pay a security price for using these types of wallets, they're by far the most user friendly and easy to uh, get involved with for beginners in the cryptocurrency space. All you need to use one of these wallets is to create a login and password, much like you would for an email service, your bank, or a social media website. There's no need for you to back up any private keys, and you can't even know about them. They're completely uh, taken care of for you by the developers of the wallet. So for somebody that's just getting into the crypto space, these are a lot easier to use and understand if you don't have sort of some level of uh, you know technical savvy or knowledge of cryptocurrencies and you just want to get started in the easiest way possible. I would say if you're a more savvy user, you probably want to avoid these wallets because uh, your funds aren't really controlled by you. In the world of cryptocurrencies, the person that stores the private keys really owns the money. And this model more represents like a traditional banking model. It kind of misses the point of uh, what you get when you have cryptocurrencies, which is complete control and ownership of your digital money. Now that said, they are useful, again, for beginners to the space and for people that uh, maybe just want to move some money in and out of an exchange to purchase or trade crypto funds. So this has been just a beginner review of private key control models. Again, there's a text article that accompanies this on our website. And as always, I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and thank you very much for watching.